Hey there, I'm Casey. Welcome to my garden in Tampa Zone 10A. If you're growing anonas, you might have noticed some leaf curling, some burnt tips, or even fruit that isn't developing just right. There's a chance that you're dealing with leaf hopper. Honestly, they're back this year and they're worse than before. A lot of people actually misdiagnose this as nutrient deficiency, but it's caused by these tiny, fast moving pests. In this video, I'm going to show you what the damage looks like, how to identify the leaf hoppers themselves, and how we're treating it organically. Check it out. So some of the damage is this leaf speckling. It's because the, they pierce underneath the leaf and they're sucking the nutrients out. Also this leaf curling and distortion is also indicative of the leaf hoppers. They're just overall yellow, chlorosis looking. Also whenever there is like low leaf vigor, you can see they just die off. They're not very vigorous whenever they're coming up. And then it causes those leaves just to drop off prematurely. Sometimes on here, I haven't seen it, there could be sooty mold. So that's from the mildew left by the sucking pest and then a fungus moves in. But I haven't seen that on here yet. So this is what a good sugar apple is supposed to look like. Oh, I think they are regrowing a little bit. They just look deformed. Here's one. Some people could say that this is caused by a nutrient deficiency of nitrogen, iron, or magnesium. But if you have a nutrient deficiency, the yellowing typically happens on the older growth first, not the newer growth. So since it's the newer growth, we can assume that it's from a pest. Also nutrient deficiencies are uniform, they're symmetrical, and you can see how this is asymmetrical. So again, that would be indicative of a pest. So here is an Atamoya. Ariel, I think, started spraying these last week. We're on week two. You see there's still leaf hoppers. Had the uneven greening. But here's what a fruit looks like. This kind of damage can be easy to overlook. Curling on the edges, leaf tip burn, even intervenal yellowing. A lot of us assume the tree just needs more magnesium or iron, especially with anonas, which are already heavy feeders. But the problem was only showing up on the newest growth and it was spreading to other crops like our long beans and sweet potatoes. Then we spotted them, barely, the leaf hoppers, and not the big ones with obvious marks either. These were small green wing-shaped insects hopping off the tree the moment we touched a branch. Most of the time you won't even see them unless you flip the leaves over carefully. Leaf hoppers feed by piercing and sucking the sap out of tender new flushes. The damage doesn't just weaken the leaves, it messes up fruit development, slows growth, and can make the tree vulnerable to other stress. On Anonas, they cause a specific kind of burn on the edges of the leaf and sometimes a cupped, crinkled appearance. Over time, the trees can push out smaller and smaller leaves and the fruit may not size up properly. We reached out to the Tropical Research and Education Center to help identify the exact leafhopper species, but they weren't able to confirm it. They recommended we send physical samples to FDACS for further ID. So we did, and FDACS suspects that it might be M. insularius, a pest of Anona that was only recently reported in Pinellas County. It's part of a group that used to be lumped under M. poasca, and identification depends on examining tiny, delicate male parts under a microscope. Because our first batch was pressed in tape, they weren't able to get what they needed. Now we're collecting live adults and preserving them in alcohol so they can confirm the species. That's how new and underreported this pest may be in Florida. All right, so we did our first pyrethrin spray, knocked down most of the adults. Uh, now there's not nearly as many flying off, if any at all. And we're getting fresh new growth, nice clean leaves, none of the discoloration. All right, so here's how we deal with the leaf hopper. Usually when you're gonna attack a pest, you wanna understand its different life cycles and stages because no one insecticide or pesticide is going to hit them broadly. You're gonna to have to pick either adults or nymphs or larval stages. So what we're going to do is, the first thing you're gonna do when you come and you identify, hey, my tree's got it. You see the adults flying everywhere. We're gonna need a quick knockdown spray. So the first thing I would use would be pyrethrin, which is just an oil from a flower, so it's not a harsh chemical. And it's gonna have that initial uh, contact kill to get rid of the adults. So after that spray, uh, we're gonna move on to a second thing, 
a product would be uh, spinosad, which is a bacteria that colonizes the leaf and anytime the nymphs chew on it, it will infect them and it will mess with their ability to molt or reproduce or lay eggs. After that, we're going to use azadiractin. In this case, it's Azamax, which is like a concentrated neem oil. It's going to act as a neurotoxin. It's an insect growth regulator. It's going to mess with their ability to molt and continue on. So it's going to break that life cycle. So anytime you're going to be mixing this stuff, you don't want to mix all of it at once. Some of the stuff will antagonize other stuff, and then you ended up ruining any, any of the ingredients. So we're going to have to split up the sprays, starting first with the pyrethrin just to knock down the adults. Then we're going to move on to the spinosad. And then after that spray, you would go with the azadiractin. So a couple other products I'm going to use in the spray. Uh, the first one will be liquid seaweed. So what this or kelp products has is a plant growth regulator, cytokinin, that helps reduce stress in the plants. So this is just kind of to help the plant deal with the localized toxin that the leaf hoppers are biting and injecting in the leaves. This is going to help them get through that. Now the other product. This isn't leaf hopper specific, but it's a uh, protect any silica product. Over time, that silica is going to be deposited in the leaves and create a much thicker leaf. It's going to obstruct any leaf chewing insects. So it's more of a preventative, it's more of a long term thing, but it's something I include. To make our spinosad, so spinosad is a bacteria, it's alive, it's a biological. So we don't want to throw it in city water or chlorinated water, so make sure to use rainwater or make sure you get rid of the chlorine in, in your water source otherwise you're going to actually start killing these and that's not what we want all right so your uh, mixing will have to go in a specific order you're always going to if you're using it the silica will go first then your kelp goes second and then whichever either the spinosad or the azadiractin the pyrethrin is only going to be used as a solo spray for that initial adult knockdown. So for our spinosad spray, we're going to use two milliliters silica, two teaspoons liquid seaweed, and six teaspoons per gallon spinosad. So since we're spraying this to hit nymphs, make sure that you're targeting underneath the leaves. The recipe that Arrow gave you for the mix was for one gallon but we only need about half gallon for our four trees. So you have to take into account how much you need. And it's easier just to make a smaller amount, like a half gallon, and have to make double because the spray does not stay active for long because it's biologic. It's also important to note the time of day that you're spraying these. It's in the evening, so it's gonna be cooler and it's not gonna like bake all of the stuff on the plants. So make sure you do it at the evening. Well, there you have it. I hope that my sugar apples and custard apples and atomoyas will bounce back in no time so we can have a nice crop for the season. If this is something you're dealing with, I hope that it helped you and you found it useful. If it did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.